Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, as always, welcome back to the sandbox mode very briefly before we get back into the main campaign. So off camera, I've been a little bit busy, which translates to a lot of time being devoured by me refiguring out just how lasers work. Lasers are a weapon I used to have a lot of experience with, and then over the the course of many patches and a actually over a year I've sort of forgot how they work for the most part. So reverse engineering our lovely word bearer, I have now updated our flyer so it does indeed use a laser system in the mouth, sacrificing the three cram cannon systems. So right now, this is pretty much untested. It uses up most of the top section here and a little bit of the undercarriage and it should hopefully be okay. I have had to make the engine a little bit bigger as well, going from 35,000 power all the way to 50,399. So my test is actually pretty simple. We are going to be spawning in the Dragon's Claw, and if we can kill all three of them before they reach us only using the laser, I will consider this a great success. There we go, only the laser is online, and that was faster than expected. That looks really sad. Okay, so that worked so quickly I didn't actually see what was going on. Let's try again. Just making sure the detection system is okay. It's a little bit slow for a laser, but it should be okay as long as things aren't completely ducking and diving. And, yep, it's doing the job actually better than expected and near perfectly. Okay, this time it's got stuck on one for a little bit too long, moving on to the next and then moving on again. <laughs> okay, okay, that makes me happy. That's absolutely lovely. Now, I have been testing out different weapons. The one weapon I almost stuck with was railguns, and so many of you want me to use railguns at the moment, so don't worry. The next build, as long as it's around about 10k volume or more, I will be using a proper railgun, using 500mm cannons and probably six or eight meter length shells. So that should be pretty deadly. In fact, if you follow me on Twitter, I was testing out railguns for a while with those exact specifications. They were brutal, but not reliable enough. The laser is just there to do a little bit of damage at the very start of the fight, which hopefully will lead us to a bit of an advantage. If they can take out a turret, or if they can core a hole into the enemy before all of the main guns fire, then they're going to be fantastic. And if they can kill very fast moving targets, well, everything is great in the world. Uh, let's have a quick go with the flying squirrel. Not actually as good. Yeah, the one problem I do have, even though that did look like a, a huge success, I did see a few issues. The one problem I do have is right now, the detection systems are more set up for the regular shells, so they're not quite as sensitive. The lasers want maximum sensitivity, since as soon as they fire, they hit the target. They don't need to really calculate all that much, they just need to know exactly where the target is when the weapon fires. The shells, however, need to figure out where the target is going and how likely the target is going to be in a specific place after a specific time. So they don't work all that well together and separating them is, I think, impossible. I think the detection systems essentially connect everything since right now this is on a separate mainframe purely so I can, you know, just use the lasers and not the other weapons and yet it uses this mainframe's detection systems. I don't think you can separate them. If you can, I will be looking that up. One final test, after doing a little bit of tweaking, I would like to see how the laser does against something which both moves pretty quickly, or at least it bobs a lot, but also has a heavy amount of armor. And our bestest friends over at the Onyx Watch have been so kind as to lend us one of their thruster craft, the only thruster craft actually in their forces. Their lieutenants and generals simply love us and we love them back, so let's test our lasers against them. With their permission, of course. 
There we go. And there goes the laser. So I've chosen this for two reasons. First of all, I've seen this craft so many times in the past, I pretty much know it off by heart. But also, it's a good example of heavy-ish armor, and also something which is going to be a bit of an issue for our cannons, since it's constantly bobbing and moving around. Which means we do need to leave its AI on, so it very well may shoot us down, as we are only using one of our weapons. And standing still. Okay, it definitely melts through regular metal, that's good to see. A few more internal explosions. The accuracy isn't as good as I would like, but that's just purely because we didn't have enough space for a decent barrel length. It's like a line of blocks. I am somewhat tempted to make them continuous lasers, although I've never had success with that in the past. Okay, so far we're looking good. Just slowly following it with the laser. Yeah, it's not good enough for a main weapon, but for one of the side weapons, the laser really does seem worth it. Okay, so why did we just stop? Because it is indeed AI dead. Okay, well thank you to the Onyx Watch for your generous donation. This will certainly make us friends until the very end. Which of course is the end of time. Honestly, you can trust us. So, it also turns out I'm being a bit of a dum-dum, as as you can clearly see here, we can swap between different mainframes and then they can have different settings here. We still share all of the detection equipment, but you can mess around with all of these settings separately. Honestly, maybe I should have looked at this a little bit harder before asking the question, can you even do that, because I didn't even need to look it up, it's right here. Which means we can have the mainframe one only for the laser, and that will allow us to have the most pinpoint accuracy, and then the others can have a more general accuracy, which is better at predicting movement. The first test of the new version of the Bloodthirster in the campaign will be against the Devourer and the Martyr. Now the thing is with the Devourer is I'm almost certain it's using either laser absorbing shields or it's using smoke dispensers. Either way, this will make our lasers significantly less effective. I thankfully have got the wave adjusters installed, which reduces damage a little bit to allow some of that reduced damage to simply go through smoke effects, but it's currently set to like 10%, so still a rather significant reduction. And here we go. Okay, so there is the Devourer, and isn't it absolutely gorgeous? And utterly terrifying at the same time. I really love how they've done that front section. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, the laser is doing pretty much nothing. Excellent, just as I thought. What a great first test of the new laser system against an enemy resistant against lasers, or maybe not? What on earth happened there? It looks like he just fell off without taking any damage. Uh, mate, you've, you've, you've kind of lost your arm. Your arm's over there, buddy. Okay, ignore that, that's fine. Don't let it any closer. Okay, incoming the missiles finally, and it looks like we've done something to its internals. Also, this glitch keeps on happening, where, where the lasers suddenly forget their settings, and then they look really thin. Don't worry, this doesn't actually affect the effectiveness of the weapon, but it's so less impressive. Give me the big lasers back. Okay, well, the lasers are damaging the underside, at least. Incoming another volley. Come on, get through. These new shells are so much better than the old ones. There we go, lots of internal damage. Pretty much all of the weapons now on the Bloodthirster are set to do internal damage rather than external damage. The result is that. Ow, ow, ow. Why are those missiles so slow? Oh, maybe they're anti-missiles or something. Okay, so... Where is the Martyr? 
Oh, we're just waiting for this thing to die. Okay. We must have killed the martyr with the lasers. Okay, not a bad first battle. We tested out the new shells, and they were so much better. Good. Still don't think we can take out the perforator, though. Although, once again, the perforator is more expensive and 10,000 more volume, so... I wouldn't really think we could. At least not as a single vehicle. Yeah, go and kill those missiles which totally are hurting no one. I believe in you. Well, this is a fitting battle. Hello, Dragon Claws. We were just looking at you guys. So clearly I haven't yet changed the targeting systems, but that will happen very, very soon. Yep, that is so much more effective than just using cannons. Well done, Bloodthirster. Okay, now we own two resource zones, which we're currently not harvesting from. It's about time we make our very own gathering pod, and I will do it in the campaign rather than going to the sandbox mode, because honestly, I would like to see an attack from the White Flyers. I'm hoping if they send an attack, it will be the perfect strength to have a single perforator or something like that. I did see an attack force recently, but it simply reinforced one of these two tiles. So... I'm unsure why they're simply not attacking us. Even the Lightning Hoods sent more attacks directly against us. The White Flyers seem to be a bit more reinforcement heavy. Okay, so the first layer of the Altar of Corn is now done, or whatever I'm actually going to end up calling it. So, it's a pretty simple idea. We're going to be sacrificing the mainframes of those who we capture in this lovely pit of drills, which... Honestly, I do love the look of, even though it looks incredibly like the White Flyers. We are learning from those who we conquer. The lasers of the Lightning Hoods are currently in our Bloodthirster. We have better advanced cannons from those we've seen from pretty much everyone. And now we're going down the route of sacrificing things, thanks to the White Flyers. So, yeah, first layer is almost done. We simply enter through here. It's a little bit cramped, but it allows access to pretty much everywhere else. And then I'm going to add a small staircase here to get to the second level, in which we are going to have a lot more corn-related stuff, and eventually a full-on logo at the top. Now, this little platform we're currently on is actually a vehicle. This isn't a fortress at all. It's actually a vehicle using the PID system. The reason is I want it to act like a normal vehicle rather than acting like a fortress. So we get to make it quite quick, we can make it even fly if we want it to, it's just so we can customise it later down the line. However, this platform, this... I was going to call it a circle, but that's clearly not true. This flat platform disc thing will be removed by the end, so we just have the floating altar. I'm actually pretty happy with it right now, but I do need to go and Google some images so that I can get some posters up, so I can make it look a little bit more... evil. Remember, we are the good guys here. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. Okay, we are almost finished now with the blood altar. All we need to do is add ourselves some lovely resource harvesters. I will be removing this flat section eventually, but for now it's holding all of our lovely chains to keep everything nice and neat, and it would be a bit of effort getting the PID system to correctly work with something so weirdly top-heavy. So it's okay as it is for now, I will make it look a little bit neater in the not-so-distant future. So so where do we add the resource harvesters? As much as this would be a lovely guest house for our bestest friends, the Onyx Watch, or anyone else who is quickly becoming our friend, in fact, if we look, we are technically friendly with the Twin Guard and the Steel Striders and the Grey Talons. 
I didn't know that. So everyone likes us and we need guest houses. So this is a nice place where people can sleep, grab a bite to eat, watch the entertainment. We are a civil people and we will court the favour of our friends. So we could add the resource harvesters something like this. Then that way it looks like they're being powered by the mainframes we are sacrificing. We are draining their power to use in our material gatherers. Or I could just put a little spin block underneath here so it looks like they're spinning with the drills. Which would also look pretty good I have to say. Or we could go with the simple cranes. Which I don't think really fits the theme so much, but it would be nice to have them moving around and we could make them look a little bit gruesome if we so desired. That wouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, maybe the cranes would be the best idea. I don't know, I will decide very soon. I call them the Soul Cages, and yes, we are going full-on Warhammer with this, and honestly, this is mostly inspired by things like World of Warcraft, which have the Soul Engines, which the Burning Legion uses. I don't know, if we're going to be the good guys, we may as well do it by burning and using the power of those who we capture. May as well put the brains to good use. Okay, so I've had to very quickly jump into the sandbox mode purely because I had built this one way thinking that it would be better to have this section over here as the front and then this section over here as the back, but now I'm thinking about it more, I would rather it's always facing this way. So, to do this, all you need to do is go into the sandbox mode and it only works in the sandbox mode, go to load your vehicle and then simply press rotate design 90 degrees clockwise. If you press this twice, it essentially flips the craft, so now backwards is forwards, forwards is backwards. And so, everything should now be working okay, so we do have full control of our little blood altar. Although it does need a little bit more balance. Okay, here we are back in the campaign, and I'm happy to say we are pretty much done with the blood altar, at least for now. So the one thing I'm not overly happy with is just this section here. I don't feel like it blends in well with the rest of the building, but considering I am planning on removing this entire disc section, that doesn't really matter all that much. The important thing is we do get to harvest these lovely resource zones, which means we do need to make another one of these over here. Here. So let's jump over to the Blood Fang and then simply jump off and let's spawn in a second Blood Altar. I really need to build more chaos related buildings just to get better at it and honestly I would love to have a little heretic village of my own. Lathrix for mayor everyone. A vote for me is a vote for toasty happy mainframes. Okay, that error message is getting really annoying. Are you building backwards? Because your controllers are backwards. That's actually really weird. The controllers got flipped when I flipped everything else. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. No more getting that sodding error message. No, I'm not building backwards. That way is forwards. That way is backwards. That's a seagull. Everything makes sense. We are getting resources at a ridiculous rate right now, if you look at the bottom left. We are currently owning one, two, three, four, five, six resource zones, and we are about to expand even more. What I need to do is start making some more expensive small craft, which I can just continuously make as soon as I have the resources. I don't really want to have more than one Bloodthirster, more than one Wordbearer, more than one Malal's Will, as they should be unique in our fleets. That, and you can't really bring more than one into a battle, even though I do strive to have 20,000 or less volume. In the current version of the game, the maximum per battle is only 50,000, so it ain't all that good. At long last, a chance to get revenge, we have found ourselves against a perforator over here towards the east. Now this was actually an accident, I was simply moving the airship over here because there's a village nearby which I want to test the laser against. However, to defend the village, a perforator appeared and now we finally get the rematch I have been looking forward to since I added the laser and the new shells. I still don't think I'm going to win, 
but I think it's going to be far, far closer. Okay, the laser's doing some pretty good work, incoming a lot of shells, of course, as always, that's the whole point of the Bloodthirster. Make sure we're actually in combat mode, that should help. Is that smoke? Oh, come on, the perforator actually has laser defenses. Well, that's just really annoying. Now, thankfully, we do have the wavefront adjuster, so we are getting about 10% of our damage through the smoke, but obviously 10% is not exactly fantastic. The new shells, though, seem to be doing much better than the old variety. Some internal damage has been done to the perforator, incoming the cruise missile straight into the core, and a lot of lag has just occurred. Whoa, my frame rate just tanked. Okay, uh, stop, stop, stop. Everything offline, please. Did that just say 99%? Okay. Is it dead? Well, it's certainly dying. Okay, then. We need to get moving now. We are capturing this perforator. It will be mine. Did you really knock off my controller? Of all the things you could have knocked off. Come on, faster. Get me over that thing. Thank you, anti-missiles. It seems like it still has its missiles online, but nothing else. Okay, one cannon is now online as well. Oh, I feel bad about capturing it, though, if it's still fighting back. But it is so close to death. Look at that thing. It's going to sink. So, I don't feel too bad. It's definitely damaged enough. Okay, moving as fast as we can towards the target. It's only just chasing after it at this point. Thankfully, the shields are keeping those shells at bay, as you can clearly see. Is it seriously still faster than us? Okay, that's sinking. That is sinking right now. Let's put down a controller here. Once again, aerial mode. Okay, we should keep the speed of the airship for a while if I don't disconnect. No, not quite. Okay, back on. We need to do that again. I may need to shoot at it. It's just too fast. Okay, a couple of shots. That's all. Okay, and off. I just fired the missiles and the subs. And the subs, the torpedoes. Playing cat and mouse with the perforator was not the intention today. Laser back on, please. Thank you. Can I just say, that was like one of the most perfect laser shots I've ever seen. Just straight in the hole I've already made. Thank you, laser. Well, I stopped it shooting, at least. Once again, smoke is being released, though, so we can't use the laser for the time being. Geronimo! Go for the front. Come on, 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 come on. And hello there, perforator. <laughs> Prepare to be disemboweled. Okay, there's two AI currently online. One at the back, one at the very front. Well, there's one exposed. And goodbye. Okay. Second one is at the back. And it seems like this thing's run out of fuel. Which is fine by me. I'm also very, very thankful we still have all of our points in Stormtrooper. Actually, how much damage does that give me? A bonus of... Modifier at this level, 200% damage. Okay. Though I really should put some back into Brawler as well, just in case. I kind of forgot to do that since last time, so there we go. Uh, where am I currently? Is that moving again? It looks like it's sort of moving. Okay, so it's underneath this section. Down we go. Okay, I see a lot of protection on this section, including surge protectors, so I'm going to assume... Yep, it's right there. Did I get it? Everything kind of went up in smoke after shooting the minigun too much. Yep, it is now indeed ours! So we do have a perforator, I will save the design in just a moment, as currently it's just a floating pile of metal. Well, sort of floating, and that looks so weird in our colours, I've got to say. 
Here's the question though, do I repair this? This is going to cost like 200,000 plus to repair in its current state. But it is the Perforator, which does have a ridiculous fire rate and a lot of survivability. We could of course also convert it like we did with the Scorpion, turning it into the Word Bearer. This could be its cousin. One from each. So after looking back at the combat footage, I am really happy with the shells and a little bit worried about the laser. The laser was clearly brutal, but, and it's a big but, it was draining the power a little bit too fast. And that's because our steam engines take a long time to get to full power. So at the start of the fight, our shields were pretty much non-existent. Now thankfully, we did have enough firepower and this time we got far luckier in that we took out the main turret and the side turret almost instantly in the fight. In our first version of that battle, we kind of just hit nothing. So... I think it is about time we swap from steam power at last to either RTGs if we really want to go down the expensive route, or some really good engines. The issue is, I'm not that good at engine production, so I think I'm going to have to have a look at the word bearer and the perforator to see how they've done their engines, and then try to duplicate this, or even just copy and paste them, and maybe look up the forums and stuff. I'm okay at making engines, I just haven't got enough experience with it really. Think. I've just been looking at some things, and annoyingly I've only just realised with the new laser system, our craft has gone from just under 20,000 to just over 21,000. So I really do need to do some reworking with the Bloodthirster. It's a little bit too big now. Okay, so before we lay into the next village, I've decided to remove all of the Q switches. This means that now we should be firing a continuous laser rather than a pulse laser, and so far, I can't really see many uses for the continuous laser, but I would like to be proven wrong, honestly. I also don't think we are accurate enough for a continuous laser, but since the village only has one defending turret, I think we will be fine. Yeah, that seems way too inaccurate. Very cool looking, and it definitely melts whatever it's touching, but way too inaccurate for this. This may take slightly longer than I was expecting. Yep, that is so less effective than our previous version. Come on, go on, there you go, you hit the mainframe, well done. Oh, which one are you gonna kill? Oh, you don't know. There we go, I've just reattached the Q switches, so now this should be significantly more effective. Or at least I hope it should be. Yeah, that looks far better already. Just chunks going away every single shot. We definitely need more engine power though. We're currently drawing 100% of our engine power, which means some damage just isn't being applied. Why do you keep doing that? I think it must be block count, because the only two things the laser AI is looking for is block count and weapon count. That's just so weird though. And it is ignoring salvage. Oh, it should be ignoring salvage. It's a brand new AI, so obviously I forgot that again. Well, Village, thank you for your time, your patience, and your ability to be tested on. Slowly but surely, we're burning you down. There we go, the village has been destroyed. Now, of course, we could have been capturing, but I just wanted at least once for us to completely raise one of the villages. So, things I need to do before the next episode. Add more engine power, stop relying on steam for everything, and maybe, just maybe, work on the laser a little bit. 
I am happy enough with the Lyser though, it certainly does its job against smaller flying opponents or just anything that moves quick, it can track them, it can damage them and ultimately destabilize them. It also adds a different weapon type to the craft which makes it a little bit harder to be countered since now we have missiles, uh, advanced cannons, torpedoes and laser. So yeah, I'm really happy with the changes and we have a perforator for our troubles. So, all is good, and apparently one of the Blood Altars have just finished harvesting resources. And you, let's go over there to capture that next village. Well, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. It feels like we have done very little, but in fact, we have tested a brand new weapon, our lovely laser. We have captured a perforator, we have destroyed a village, we claimed two resource zones in fact, and we killed a lot of the white flyers. In the next episode though, we need to start making a bit of a push. I've decided, along with a lot of the comments, to simply kill the white flyers first. The main reason is, I really want to see what will happen to my relationship with the other factions once I completely obliterate the white flyers, since it seems like... The White Flyers really aren't all that friendly, a lot of people dislike them, except for the Lightning Hoods. Which of course, I don't really care about since we've pretty much already destroyed the Lightning Hoods. So in the next episode, we're going to push north, try and find the White Flyers base, and then eradicate it. After that, we will be going against the Grey Talons. Now off camera, I will be working on the Bloodthirster, trying to get the volume down a little bit, and hopefully replacing some of the engines. I may also make the Blood Altar a little bit prettier since at the moment, it is fairly close to being completely done, it's just a bit rough around the edges. Although it does look very, very interesting. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.